Since 1975, scientists have been studying the link between the consumption of animal products and cancer. We're not sure of the exact mechanism, however we do know that the cholesterol, saturated fat, endotoxins, TMAO, NU5GC, heme iron and heterocyclic amines, in particular FIP, in meat have all been strongly associated with either causing or increasing the risk of cancer. Heterocyclic amines have been associated with increased risk of kidney, colon, lung, breast, prostate and pancreatic cancer. Heterocyclic amines are created when skeletal muscles of animals are hit with high dry heat such as baking, grilling or frying. Interestingly, Dr Michael Greger has a video called Reducing Cancer Risk in Meat Eaters, linked below, which shows that boiling chicken in water that never goes higher than 212 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 100 degrees Celsius, can lessen the production of these DNA damaging carcinogens being created in the meat. The only issue with this is that according to research, this may not totally kill off Campylobacter, E. coli and Salmonella. And here in the UK, our Food Standards Agency has found that 73% of chickens sold carry Campylobacter. However, I digress. Let's hear now from Dr Milton Mills on whether there is a connection between meat and cancer and what that connection might be. I show people a picture of a, of a cow, an elephant. What is a natural diet for those animals? And everybody says plants, of course. And then I follow that up with the question, at what point in their life do they eat animal protein when they're babies? When they're nursing and drinking their mother's milk, which is loaded with animal protein, that is the only time in their lives that they eat animal protein. What it lets you know is that for plant-based animals, the ingestion of animal protein is a growth signal. Whenever the body sees animal protein being absorbed, it interprets that as a signal to try and grow. The problem with that is that if a plant-based species continues to ingest animal protein post weaning when they should be eating their natural plant-based diet, they are starting to stimulate genes called mTOR genes, which are master regulatory growth genes that stimulate cells to divide. It suppresses uh, cell death. And the overall effect in infants is to make the animal grow and get bigger. But in adult animals where you cannot grow or get bigger, when you start stimulating those mTOR gene complexes, you promote the development of tumors. And many of those tumors are benign. You know, you can get lipomas, you can get uh, cysts. Women can get them in their breasts, their uterus. Uh, men get enlarged prostates. We get a lot of non-cancerous tumors, but we also get frank tumors. A very important study that was conducted over an 18-year period showed that in adults who ate the most animal protein they had, number one, a fourfold increase in cancer incidence. They had four times as much cancer as people who did not eat all of this protein. And in addition, they had a 75% increased risk of dying prematurely. It not only promotes cancer, but it also promotes metabolic problems like heart disease, diabetes, hypertension, and stroke. This overpromotion of protein, especially animal protein is really deleterious for human health and is a major driver in much of the chronic disease that we see in the United States. Animal protein also does something else. It increases growth hormones, one of which is called insulin-like growth factor. Studies have shown that cancer cells are studded with receptors for insulin-like growth factors. When animal protein is absorbed from the human gut, it passes through the liver. The liver sees this animal protein and says, ah, we're trying to grow, and it starts pumping out higher levels of insulin-like growth factor, which is called IGF-1. And that IGF-1, it's like throwing fuel on a fire. It markedly increases the tendency of cancer cells to grow. The suggestion is from the research that overstimulating these mTOR genes, that in and of itself in an adult cell will cause that adult cell to become cancerous. What the exact mechanism is there, I don't think has been fully made clear, but we do know that turning on these genes will cause adult cells, which are supposed to be in their steady state phase, to begin to become cancerous. And it may be the simple fact that 
growth genes in the cells of a being that is still growing can promote normal growth but that in adult cells stimulating those growth genes can become what are called oncogenes or cancer promoting genes and they can actually cause the dna to somehow change in a way that it promotes cancer development thank you so much for watching if you liked the video please give it a thumbs up leave a comment below and subscribe for more upcoming videos